It's just going to have to be on my on my um, on your regular computer. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we got four five minutes. Okay, I'm telling people. If you wouldn't mind sharing. Um, if you can. Are you sharing it right? Because if you post it, I can just repost your post on my page. I put it on my Facebook. So. Oh, okay, let me do that now then. Hold on, let me see if I can. Thank Facebook you, if you have time. Book. Oh. I put it on Instagram. Uh, let's do that. Let's do that. How? Share now. I invited Don Barnhart to come in and say hello since he worked with him, but he said he's on a ship. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. He can't make yes. it. Yes. He said thanks. Yes. Oh, I love him. One of my whole favorite people on the whole planet is because of him that I got back into comedy. I love that guy. Oh, that's so, that's a, I want to hear that whole story sometime. Oh, you it's should, a good one. It's a fun one. You should come in and just talk about people who've been good to you in comedy. Oh, man, I've had so many of them. Yeah. I, I'm talking to one of them right now, baby. <laughs> well, you've been good to me, man. You're always supportive. Well, and even when my ego is on the floor, you got nothing but good to say. You and Aaron. Well, again, at the same point, so comedy is already a difficult enough industry to begin with. Yeah. Do to already have to deal with like everything else around it? Like, no, I already get enough negativity from either, you know, like the crowd or my own thoughts. Like, I don't need, I don't need like other people around me that I'm hoping that are supporting me going, oh, I'll just see that. Like, that's not what this industry is. I mean, it should be like one of those you want everyone to succeed. You're all in the same business. Like exactly. be excited for somebody that may be making it. And if they're doing it, well, then that just means that you might have to work harder, other person. Like, yeah, that's what I'm, it is. I feel. I'm still taking tips on how to get funnier, you know, because like. I'm basically, you know, uh, while we're waiting for Tommy to show up, I'm basically set up punch. You know, I'm like a box mm -hmm. set up punch girl. And I've been taking tips from people on, you know, how to do crowd work and how to make set up punch. <laughs> Jamal Cole well, that's a different was giving me like uh, crowd work. Crowd work is a different art. It's it's uh, again like the difference between like doing like comedy writing your punchlines everything. Like crowd work is another one of those like uh, the best I've seen that it was uh, his name is Jeff Akiri. He's a, a, a comedy seller in New York. He's a younger dude, but watching him do his crowd work, listening to him, the advice that he'd given me last time he was here was always leave yourself an out. Like if you're gonna do crowd work, it doesn't it, like that question has to lead into like your next joke or whatever. It doesn't matter what the crowds at yes or no. You have to be able to like figure out how to get to there. Like if you're gonna do the crowd, oh yeah, so you guys ride bikes? Oh yeah, you don't ride bike. Oh well, I do. And blah, blah. if they had yes, oh well, what kind of bike? Oh well, I was riding my bike. As long as you give yourself an out, if you're gonna do the crowd work, that's the easiest thing. Is just leave yourself an out. And I was like, well, that was great advice. Yes, absolutely. But uh, I think. Yeah, but again, like crowd work. Go ahead. I was given tips by Vanessa Hollingshead that um, when you do crowd work, know where you're going. Don't ask a question if you don't know where it's going. Like too many people go, oh, so who's from, who's from, who's locals? We'll have somewhere to go with that. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, I mean, it's great to say who's local, who's from out of town, but everybody does it. So make it fun. 
<laughs> exactly or figure out which side they're going to you know like uh, oh you're from out of town oh great where are you guys from or you're like do something like with it but even though all right so all the out of town or you know and go back to whatever your bit was but like always just manage to make sure that like if you ask the question that you're able to get to whatever joke you're trying to set because crowd work is essentially it should be like a setup for your joke yes i agree so yeah, that, that, like I said, that's why I don't do crowd work. I very rarely talk to the crowd. Like I don't. It it scares me. Like I just hopping in there, being like, "Oh yeah, so we're because I don't know what they're gonna say, and if I'm like not ready for it, kind of deal. It's like, uh, uh, and they see that nervousness. Yeah, yeah. So at the same point, that's why I'm like, mm -mm, I'll just stick to you know telling ha 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 and moving on. I was doing a joke about how I used to be a slut and I had a cop a district. <laughs> a cop, a district attorney, and a judge of all in six months. And I looked at this, I caught the, I locked in eyeballs with this guy in the <laughs> audience in the front row. And I go, you're a cop, aren't you? <laughs> and his wife died laughing. She gave it away that he was a cop. Right. And I go, your wife is throwing you under the bus right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, your wife is definitely not a criminal, hopefully, because she's awful at it. That's the only time I really did crowd work. It just fell in my lap. And, and see, sometimes that's some of the best crowd because sometimes when you're just like, oh, wow, I wasn't expecting that, but it reminds you of a joke or something that you could head somewhere else with it. Yeah. Which is also kind of fun. But yeah, that's uh, like crowd work is one I, I for sure still have to work on. Like that is, that's a craft in and of itself. Yeah, I took that class for the Greg Wilson. Today. Oh, how was it? Today's June twenty seventh, between one and two, right? Uh, yes. So we got the right time. He's usually here right on time. So hopefully, I'm checking my email to make sure he's not having trouble. Okay. Getting, getting in. His, his assistant said, "Try to stay within the one hour time frame." But if Tommy runs over, it's okay. <laughs> Perfect. Per when he's done, he's done. So like five minutes till two, we need to ask a very open-ended question. Such like, as? Like, what's your take on the world, world peace? <laughs> Something you'll eat. <laughs> Like, Are you, know, you the you... kind of guy who reads the back of the uh, shampoo bottles while you're in the shower? Yes. Yeah. These are very altering life ending. Why we need to know these answers or we can't live without them. You know, the kind of when you were five and your your dad went to put you to bed and you didn't want to go to sleep yet. And so you'd ask like a really philosophical question that would take, I don't know, like where did Red Riding Hood come from and why? And then he's there for another half hour till he falls asleep. That. <laughs> that's yeah, hilarious. That's what we're looking for. Like we're looking for like, like, I don't know. That might be a too long. Like what is Tommy Chong doing between projects to keep him busy till the next one? Yeah. Like, I feel like that's a question that is, uh, that could take us a, either a, a mile or a minute. We'll see. Yeah. I'm going to see where Tommy is. All righty. He might have trouble getting out of. I think he does these back to back. So he might have trouble leaving right on time with the last one. Oh, for sure. Well, again, we, we smoke. So sometimes we're not the best with that whole time thing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind if somebody else doesn't do what they said that they're going to do. But by golly, if I say I'm going to do something, I'll do it if it kills me. You know, For the most part, there are very few times I've had to like say, oh, man, I, I, I'll be there and I'm not. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, that's always for me, that's always like an awful feeling. I always feel like I'm letting people down if I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, man, I forgot. I hate that. But, you know, every once in a while, you do have to. I don't know.
Now the only thing I have to worry about is that my cat doesn't want to come say hi in the middle of this interview. <laughs> he came and checked out the desk earlier. Oh. He's like, hey, what are you doing? You're setting stuff up? What's all this stuff? Let's see your cat. Let's see. Well, right now, thank goodness he's sleeping, but, but I'll show him to you real quick. We'll go on a little walk. That's Rupert the cat, and he does what he wants. I love black and white cats. They're so much fun. They are. They seem to know that they're the cutest cats. The, and again, they have such attitude. Like this one, like I said, his name is Rupert. He does what he wants, and that's the way he was introduced to me. Aww. I was like, is that his whole name? Or and literally like he'll open cabinets, like as you're going, like opening the fridge, he'll like want to check out the bottom drawer. Folding clothes, he'll want to sniff every piece. Like he's into everything. Like he wants to know what like a new package comes. You better let him sniff it and like a second you open it. Let him go through it first. Like he's like he has to check everything out. He's incredible. Oh, oh wait. Oh no, that's you and me. He's not here yet. Go ahead, nab it. Gabby Fisher. Hmm. And then somewhere around here, I have a rabbit running around. Which I'm not a huge fan of this rabbit, but it's whatever. Wow. How old's your rabbit? Uh, got it last Christmas. I had said to my significant other that, oh my God, my favorite movie is Roger Rabbit. And somehow they took that as buying me a real rabbit. And I was like, oh, well, I didn't see that coming. Yeah, a t-shirt, a hat would have done, but no, got me a live rabbit. And my response to that when I opened it on Christmas Eve is I yeah. opened it, saw it, and I was like, oh, you got me something with a heart. <laughs> Yay. I'm working hard at trying to get Tommy here. I'm not ignoring you. Oh, I am ignoring you. No worries. Yeah. Well, <laughs> She's like, I just told you I was. I'm in the middle of doing something else. Let's see here. He might be having trouble getting on. I don't know. There could be. Like I said, I did have a little uh, a little issue when I was trying to sign in, but yeah, it just sent me a new, uh, 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 still like the same stuff, but like a different page. Uh huh. So I had to like X out of the last one to like reopen it because I tried opening while the last one was still open. I was like, why won't it let me in? Yeah. Because I think it thought I was trying to sign in twice. Oh. That makes sense. Yeah. And it's like, how can this person be doing two meetings when you're already in trying to get into one? I was like, oh, okay. So I had to close down the last one to get into this one.
I don't understand. Hmm. Hmm. Here we go, I'll call him. Okay, will you do me a favor? What's that? Remind me 0210, that's the last four of the cell number I have to call. One second, don't tell me yet, okay? 0210. Yep. Got it. Okay, 0210? Yep. Okay. I don't think it's too much to call right now. I don't think so. Oops. Hi, John Paul. Hi, John Paul. It's Linda Marcus Smith. No, I email. I emailed you the codes for him to type in in case the link didn't work. Perfect. Thank you so much. His assistant is sending him the link. I mean, it's okay, cool. Is calling him to see what's the problem. Gotcha. Unfortunately, his assistant isn't with him, so it may turn out. Oh. It may turn out we have to redo this. All right. Let me see. I know what I can do. I can participants. Call. Well, like I said, it was a short, uh, 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 what was it, like four days ago, five days ago we asked him? Yeah. Usually if the assistant is there, it's good, but anything can happen, you know? Exactly. <laughs> this is show business. Exactly. Amen. There's no business like show business. Okay, so I'm going to send this to John Paul, his assistant, and There we go. We got it now. Ooh. Admit. What am I admitting to? <laughs> We're going to have some fun now. I, I had to do that too. So yeah, it, it made me push Hold a on. bunch of different buttons. Hold on, Dan. Tommy, hi. Hi, babe. Thank you Almost so you. much. Thank you so much for yeah, coming in. Yeah, I almost missed you, but uh, I had to get up and uh, I was working in my shop and I looked at my phone and I said, oh, I got to Zoom. Okay, but I'm here. Thank you so much. What were you working on in your shop? And before you I'm answer- making, uh, I, I, everything I make, uh, you can smoke out of, you know, it's a pipe. <laughs> so I, I don't waste it uh energy and so what i did i made some fish clubs you know when you go fishing and you get a big fish in the in the boat you gotta coax it yeah you gotta convince it to stay so uh the natives on the west coast they used to be very decorative with their with their fish clubs and so uh so i started making fish i i'm, I'm making fish clubs but uh, they're pipes so they're not only a club, but you can smoke out of them as well, you know. Do you sell them? Brilliant. <laughs> Are those available for the public to buy? 
Uh, no, I just just been. I got a I got a guy on the phone. He's calling me to be on the podcast. So, so I, I won't. I won't. Uh, Super. Uh, I'll just. I wanted you to meet Dan Mackey, Tom. Uh huh. Dan Hi, Tommy. How are you? Hey, good. How are you doing, man? Good. Good. He's a DJ and does private shows and also the comedy seller. He's the DJ there, the house DJ. Oh, oh where, where are you located? Uh, here in Las Vegas at the uh, Rio. Oh, you at the Vegas. Oh, I love Vegas. Yeah. Love it here. Yeah, it's a great place. It's a great place to be. <laughs> <laughs> what's, been nice... go what's been going on with your life, Tommy? Oh, this has been exciting. Um, we we've been working on, or my daughter and and her guys been working on a, a Cheech and Chong uh, documentary, and uh, it's finished. But it's uh, we're waiting for the strike and everything else to be over to, before we make a deal, and um, and that and and then we're Cheech and I are about to start a biopic. You know where it it it, it tracks our uh, the characters' lives after Up in Smoke, you know. Oh wow! When we bring them up to date. What what are they doing now? It's pretty interesting. The script's really good. Fascinating. Yeah. Well, we're again waiting for all the all the political stuff to to settle. You know. Yeah, but yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Doesn't matter. You know, because a movie, uh, whether it's in the public eye or not you're always working on it you know there's uh, never a time when you're that's one thing about a movie company you're always busy <laughs> that's true that's true wow so do you ever do stand-up comedy these days or are you so in, in engrossed in other things that stand-up is not anything in your plate well, stand up has always been a, a will always be a part of my life because it's a, it's a craft. It's like learning how to throw pots or or, or to do macrame or or uh, you know paint landscapes. Uh, it's a craft, and uh, once once you uh, once you conquer that craft, it, it's usable. All the time, I, I use it. I use the skills all the time. So I'm. I, there's never a time when I'm not doing stand up. In, oh. in fact, I got a new thing now. I charge people uh, money to so I will shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I would. I would love to catch your stand up when you come to Vegas. I hear you were here for a convention about a month ago. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I, in fact, I did a little bit when I, I was in Vegas. Uh, you know, well, you know, they, that that's the trick they do with stand up comedians. You know, they honor them. You know, uh, we wouldn't like to give you a plaque and uh, <laughs> we're going to have four, four or five comedians open for you. And then we expect you to say a few words after, you know. <laughs> but what I do, if, if, if they're not paying me for stand up, then I give them my uh, spiritual rap, and uh, and that's enough to get my wife out of her seat heckling me. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Or that's or funny. my son, my son will actually walk on stage and and fix the mic, pretend like there's something wrong with the microphone, <laughs> just to just to push me off the, because once once. You know, I, once I get into a, a, a spiritual rap, it it uh, it has a life of its own. I mean, uh, you know, because uh, you know, there's a reason there's so many uh, spiritual uh, t television shows on. Uh, you, you know, you if you go surf the, the TV, you'll you'll find I don't know twenty, thirty, maybe more. Sure. Uh, of, and and all they do is, is is talk about God and what and what God said, <laughs> or what God did say. I, I like that one. <laughs> it's always fun. It's always fun. No, I I love I love getting into uh, into spiritual raps, uh, especially. I, I, love with... I love it when you start talking spiritually 
because yeah you when yeah. you do you're right on the truth right on the money and what you're saying changes lives yeah yeah and it uh it, yeah that that that's that's the beauty and and and, and the the problem that i found is, is and that's why you know i don't have my own in fact i'm going to start a a, a not a church like like uh, th oh. this is not a pipe a necklace and because i got thrown in jail for having a, wa a water pipe and so everything i make now i can smoke out of and this is a not a pipe and then i thought i was going to do a not a church it's a gathering a gathering of people on on a spiritual vein but it's not the typical church when i was in greece I went to these ruins, and there's one uh, island. I didn't, I, I didn't get to the island, but there's one island where this this building has been used for religious uh, uh, purposes since the beginning of Greece of of man actually, and wow. it and, and the building nothing changes in the building except the name. <laughs> So, Jardot uh, does it, a Christian church. No, a, a pagan, a pagan church. And then wow. it went Christianity, and then it went Muslim, and then it went Jewish. It's become all, it became a, a synagogue after it was a mosque. And, wow, I and couldn't even decide thought. what it wanted to be. <laughs> well, no, it, 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 it's, it's doing what was demanded of the times. Oh, you okay. See? It, it, it's everybody it's it, it's it's every you know the generation's interpretation of what of what the the good books you know the spiritual books tell them uh -huh. and so and so that's what the different religions see, see the truth is everybody all religions say the same thing there's only one god you know mm -hmm. that, that that's what made the jews special from everybody else back in the day and I think that's what also made them a target, too, because their God was invisible. See, all the other gods, you oh. know, the fall and all, they were idols. And you could see them, the sun god, and, you know, the god of war, all that. But the Jews were the first to come up with the concept that God is spirit. And, and as spirit, he, he appears... Uh, to us in different forms because uh, we are we are of God and and the most incredible uh, truth that I that I have stumbled upon and and it and it just astounds me it just because I see see there's not only there's only one God but there's only one of everything like you are special. Uh, there's no one else on the planet exactly like you, because wow. you are you are an immortal being that's always been here. Sure. And and what we are, we have evolved in order to enjoy, uh, uh, in order to enjoy reality. We uh, have to learn how to exist in in uh, the physical world, you see. Sure. And, wow, what and, a refreshing outtake. I like that. Yeah. Very and, refreshing. And, I needed that. And we're only here to learn, by the way. We're all special, but we're each of us are here to learn uh, whatever we're here to, destined to learn. Do you feel like and we're here all, to teach as well? Oh, absolutely. 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 Uh, and, and there's a Chinese saying says, when the pupil is ready, the teacher appears. And, Heard that. And, and see, and, 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 that's, and, and that's what we're here to do. We're here to learn. And, and because we only learn from our mistakes, that explains Trump, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That is funny. I remember when Trump used to just be a verb. Oh, a what? When it used to just be used as a verb. 
when you oh somebody. yeah yeah the game <laughs> huh? the yeah game. yeah it was bridge it was a bridge term yeah. or 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 gin gin yeah, think gin it was gin yeah yeah Trump yeah <laughs> yeah but now but you know people don't realize uh, you, you know like when I said about uh, the spiritual thing. I was in New York at a wedding, mm -hmm. and then the owner of the Celtics uh, was at the wedding, and so he offered to fly us in a private plane to uh, Boston for the seventh game. Oh wow! Uh, that uh, Boston was playing with with uh, Miami, <clears throat> and so, and then while we were there, we stayed at a private club his private club and it was a it was an old men's club so it had the best vibe it had this old stuff you know it, it was dec decorated in everything my wife hates you know <laughs> <laughs> dark leather <Her> taste. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and, uh, so we stayed there but they had entertainment and so one night, uh, this friend of mine, whose wedding, uh, his daughter, we went to, uh, he sang, he's the singer. And one night, uh, James Keach, uh, <clears throat> the actor, director, he, he did a little talk and showed his, his movies. And then the third night, uh, they wanted me uh, to do, I guess, stand up, you know, <laughs> say a few words. But instead, <laughs> I, I, I went uh, spiritual on them. And there you it, go. Was, it was it was it was interesting it was fun <laughs> I, 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 interesting. I got, well the thing is when you're a comedian everything is really a set set up you know no matter what you say you're yeah. setting them up because you got their attention the whole thing about stand-up is having people listen to listen to every word you're saying and watch every move you make you see and, and, and that's very rare unless you're on doing stand up. And, and, and the stand up is like a balancing act, you know? You got to get from A to uh, B without falling. Yeah, know? sure. A very unique craft. But, but if you fall, that's okay. That's funny too. You see? Yeah. That's why bombing, bombing can, can create an act, you know? But what you've done, you've, you've got the people's attention. Now, whether or not, now I watched the master comic wow. of all comics was which was Red Fox. Now sure. Red Fox, Red Fox, I seen him take an audience so high, they're laughing so hard that they were hurting themselves. And then I seen him purposely take the audience down so far that they were literally running out of the club. They couldn't wait to get out of the club because he got so disgusting. You know wow. how he, he could get so funny and he could make you laugh? Well, he could get so disgusting that he could make you throw up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then after he did that, he, he the people left, a lot of people left, and then he went back on stage and brought him up and did another hour. So he did two hours. I watched him do two hours of phenomenal. Not, wow. Nothing, never forgot any. It just create. It was just a, it was like a, a creation, a comic creation. And that's why he was, everybody, Ed, Eddie Murphy, everybody says he was the best of the best. That was the first, wow. al <laughs> that was the first album I ever listened to, the Red Album. When my parents left, when the parent my parents left the house, oh yeah, we get yeah. it out and play it and just die laughing at all the references. Was that the <laughs> one that he did the race, the race track? I think so. Where he did a whole thing where where he named the different horses different names, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and, uh, and one one of the one of the horses were named my dick. My dick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, followed, by, followed by wet towel wet towel oh, wet towel coming up the rear wet towel driving <laughs> up the rear <laughs> red fox oh man yeah uh, I was the same way we found his record in an army dump 
Like I lived in Calgary. I lived close. Well, everything was army back in the day. And we were close to a, a, a dump, you know, like a garbage dump where the people, they didn't, you know, wasn't hauled away. It was just brought to a place and dumped into the garbage dump. And the I landfill. Found, yeah. Well, no, it wasn't even called landfill. No, no, it was just a garbage dump. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it wasn't it even fancy. It eventually became landfill. I but, see. Uh, but we found a Red Fox record uh, in the garbage and, and that, that, my dick was on. Oh my god! And then I met him. I, I, we we became uh, friends because I had a after hours club in uh, in uh, Vancouver, and uh, it got very popular with all the uh, visiting uh, celebrities. And so everybody that was anybody came down to the parlor, and I, and I met so many great people, you know. And that's where uh, we got discovered by Diana Ross, uh, and and then. Uh, uh, Barry Gordy flew right to the club, and that's how famous that club was, man. It was wow. Got Barry Gordy to fly out there, and yeah, and that's where I met all the great. And that's how I got really got into comedy because I used to play in a, a, a black rhythm and blues band, and a lot of uh, the sh places that we played had a floor show, and they always had comedians, and uh, and I I've, I've seen some of the best in the world you know come on brad fox give you an yeah. idea you, you used to be a guitar player yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i thank god i wasn't good enough <laughs> <laughs> do you still do you still play now oh yeah oh yeah i i and i haven't really improved because i uh, <laughs> i you know i'm a like uh I, a, I won't say farm boy, but I, I lived in in the country. Uh -huh. I'm more like a, I'm more like a reservation, like a native reservation. Uh, that's where I was raised, and and uh, and I, and I learned to play the guitar good enough to uh, to be uh, hired by a fiddle player. And I went eight, eight years old. I used to play for house parties, uh -huh. and, and and that's how I got my chops. I got good chops, but uh, but I'm not I, I'm not nowhere near a, a you know professional guitar player. Not just even. enjoy doing it. That was my dogs. Oh, uh, when did we get to meet Shelby? No, B. I don't know. Oh, it's a worker, I guess. Uh, ah, good question. I, I gotta. I, I'm wondering when I get to meet her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's. What kind of dogs you have running around there? I got two uh, poodles. I call them. One's a shit salada, and another one's a yap salada. <laughs> Those yeah, sound like red poodles. fox names. Yeah. They're, they're poor. Well, those names, I feel like it's very easy to identify who's who. <laughs> no, one name is Oso, and the other name is uh, Captain. And they're, they're, uh, they're uh, multi poo, multi poos. Oh, cute. <laughs> yeah, actually, they're both my son's dogs. Uh, I got, I got, a, we got them. His, his ex girlfriend, uh, dog fell in love with Paris. And when they broke up, she she left Paris and took the dog, but the dog mourned for Paris so much that she had to give him back. He was oh. he, he went on a hunger strike. <laughs> he fell in so much in love with Paris that he was going to die if he didn't get him. So anyway, so and right now Paris and uh, and his family are in uh, Bali uh, on vacation, and so now we're. Uh, uh, I, I'm babysitting both dogs. Is the so, dog eating? Do I what? Is the dog eating or starving to death right now? Oh, no, no, no. He, he eats. He, he not only eats, but we taught him when you want to treat, lift, lift up your paw. You know, give me a paw. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> he follows me around and he's always got that little fucking paw up in the air. <laughs> oh, yeah, I just, you just got you just date your little shithead. Go on. But he's I needs another I get, treat. I give him a treat. I give him a treat. So he's They're he's really. he's no longer worrying that she's gonna come back. Oh no, no. He, he well once 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 Paris adopted him, you know. Oh, he also he's been through a lot, you know. He's a, really a sweetheart dog. He got attacked uh, by a pit bull, uh, and, and he had his jaw all m mangled. The pit bull bit bit his jaw and gave him an overbite. <clears throat> yeah, he's he's had some traumatic experiences, but he's uh, but he's he's with Grandpa now. The, my dad, you know, and toward the uh, the last part, latter part of his life, he had poodles, you know, and they were my uh, sister's dog. And then, you know, how parents always end up with the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, well, look at, look at me. Dad. <laughs> yeah, it always turns out that way. Yeah, you're not doing oh. anything. Will you look after <laughs> all this shit that I bought and I shouldn't have? Yeah. <laughs> One time when you were on here, Tommy, and I wanted you to say it again straight to Dan Mackey, you were on here and I was telling you that I'm always in extreme physical pain, but when I'm on stage doing comedy, I feel no pain. And you went spiritual on me with the answer. Would you would you say that so Dan hears it right out of your mouth? Well, when you're when you're performing you're not a, you're never alone <clears throat> but especially when you're performing because sure. you see every 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 comedian prays before they go on now they may not admit it but they do everyone and and you know i instead of praying you know what i used to do i used to walk, walk out the 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 hotel door and i would say to myself on my on my way to the show i'm going to be the next time i walk see this door i'll be i'll have finished the show and i and, and i'm and i'm done i'm coming back into the room and so i purposely remembered it, it's 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 like uh using the future you know, you, you 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 see, and when you see the future, then what you did in between is not is not a big a worry. At least for me, it wasn't. Because in other oh, words, wow. no matter what happens, you see. And so, so what I I used to do, uh, whenever well, whenever I I do anything, I always say a little prayer. You know that thoughts and prayers. You know everybody says, uh, you know when a mass shooting happens, and then people get uh, upset. They go, "We need more than thoughts and prayers." Uh, yeah, but that's where why you have thoughts and prayers so you can get what you want. You see, like you can't shoot a movie until you got a script. Okay, sure. And so you can't things won't change in your life until you until you have a plan. And if your plan consists of like my plan is just letting God handle it, you know, <laughs> because you, hey, God, you're pretty good, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you handle, take it the rest of the way, Lord. Totally, yeah. yeah. I just like throw it out to the universe. I'm like, all right, well, I said it. Here you go. I'm sending it out. Where's it gonna that, land? That, that's it. That's it. And all you have to do is just remember. Uh, you learn from your mistakes, and, yeah. and so it's those mistakes that that you got to concentrate on, as opposed to you know what works, and, and, and if you know what works, okay, file that away and use it as the dessert. You know, dessert. Yeah. If you have too much dessert, you get sick. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. the, the idea of a dessert is is a reward for a, a job well done and, and 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 that's what that's how you want to do your 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 life actually uh, you know pray for what you need and expect to get what you need and 
and what, what we're only here for another for the, really the oh. real reason we're here is to help each other think about this 100% agreed yes <clears throat> when you're born you're helpless you're 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 helpless you need something to help you it might be a human it might be a dog might be might be something a mother it'll be a mother of some sorts uh -huh. because you're helpless and you remain helpless until you're a, a few days a few you know a few hours you don't even know how to eat when you're first born you learn real fast but, but somebody had to teach you but somebody helped you we're here to learn and 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 People are here to help you learn, and and that's why that's why you got to be grateful. There, there's a there's a uh, what I've been telling people. I do cameos, and you know, oh. people are having a hard time. Uh, you know, it, it's the hard times you're going through is, is like a golfer on a bad stretch. You know, a golfer that can't make a putt when he used to make every putt when he saw it, and all of a sudden he, he he's hit a thing well oh. obviously you when you when you're running into mistakes you're running into a field of of learning <laughs> you're now you gotta you got yourself into this shit now you gotta figure a way to get out of it <laughs> absolutely wow yeah. so, so that's that's what you do and and Stand-up comedy is really a very beautiful way to to have therapy to do deal you know with your problems because that's what you're really doing. You're throwing your problems out there, and then you're you're the answer either comes from you or the audience or somebody. But the whole idea is 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 to to answer the questions that are bugging you. You know, and 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 if you can do that, and make people smile and laugh, then you, you got a career. You know, luckily, uh, luckily, I, I, uh, you know, because I, I knew. In fact, this guitar player, this great guitar player that I wrote a lot of the Up and Smoke movies with, you know, the. Um, you like my eye, the hit that we did uh, with uh, with Cheech, you know. Mama, right, talk, well, yeah. Mama talking to me, trying to tell me how to live. Da, 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 da. Well, that was, yeah. was written by this guitar player named Gay Delorme. <clears throat> and he, that's all he had. He had that line. Mama talking to me, da, 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 da. That's all he had. Uh -huh. And he had, he had the music and the riffs. So I wrote the lyrics. And... Uh, but Gate Alarm, he 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 did this beautiful trick, you know. Uh, like I, I, my guitar, you know, I had just an old Gibson and a, a Fender amp, and that. And Gay goes, uh, uh, Tom, do you mind? Can I? Can I? Uh, let me try your guitar. Yeah, oh Gibson, yeah, these are nice. And then then he goes, uh, Do you mind if I fix your amp? And he goes over and he does something to the knobs. Next thing you know, he's sounding like Hendrix, better than Hendrix. Wow. At a, that's coming out of my guitar, my amp. I couldn't get anywhere near that. That, that <laughs> <new adult. laughs> And also, it's knowledge and trial. And he was this monster guitar player. And, and he died, basically, he died penniless. Uh, in, in a friend's home because he, uh, he, he could afford nothing. Even though he wrote the song, he got re re residuals from the song and he could have had a hell of a career, you know, but for some reason he was only here uh, for a relatively short time. And, uh, and, and he was, you know, helped me. And that's the way my life's been. You know, I've always run into these incredible, you know, Muhammad Ali's, the Michael Jackson, the, oh, sure. you know, the Jimi Hendrix, you know. It's yourself. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And that's it. That's you. When, when I asked you the question before about the pain goes away when you're performing, you said 
that because when you're on stage performing comedy, you're as close to God as you're ever going to get. Can you expand on that? Yeah. Well, you can, uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul, you know, the one, I guess he started the Catholic Church. You know. He had a thing called praying without ceasing. I'm, I'm approaching that. In other words, your every waking thought is giving giving thanks to the creator and the more you do that the closer you get to god and the closer you get to god the more beauty you're you're you're, you're rewarded with because the bible tells you behold we are beholders god does <laughs> You know, when we you look up at the sky and you see those beautiful stars twinkling away, well, if you got any closer than what we are now, it would be a whole different picture because what you're seeing in those little twinkling stars is uh, incredible violence and chaos and and and, uh, and explosions and and oh, just gases. Uh, those, those pretty colors it's gas <laughs> it's wow sulfur. it's it, it's violence and and we we live in a world of, of uh, a physical world where there's violence and that explains evil because you can't have good without evil yeah. sure. If you just have good and nothing else, then all you have is heaven. And, and and think about heaven really is the opposite of the physical world, which is physical. And it, in the physical world, which we live in now, we have everything. We have left, right, we have violence, we have up, down, we have evil, we have uh, beauty, we have ugly, we have everything because it's a physical world. And what we are, we're beholders. That's that's our job, is to, to go around and to go, wow. <laughs> All right. Thank you, God. And so so if you if you keep your mind on God, then what, all you do is, is see God's handiwork, which is all beautiful, in, in so many ways, so many ways. Because as evil as there are on 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 this this physical plane of ours, and as violent as everything is, there's the opposite, which is peace, love, and uh, prosperity. Basically, prosperity. Because when I realized, I had to be careful of what I was asking for because you, you reach a point in your life where you will receive exactly what you ask for. That's why you be very careful when you ask for uh, money, say, or fame, or, or uh, anything that, that, see, what we're here to do is to observe. Think about this. We're here to be observers, beholders of God's greatness, okay? That's our job. In other words, when we look, we shouldn't look. We shouldn't look for for the the mistakes or for the bad. We should always look for the good. That's what a beholder does. And because the more good you see, the more good is behind that and behind that. <clears throat> and the more you will evolve. And, and, and it never stops. It never stops. But because we are human, here to learn, like a tango dancer. See, tango 
And there's a couple of things. Uh, well, everything for art is of God. A anything art is of God because when you ask an artist, what, 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 what give you, what made you think of that? For the most part, I, I don't know. Just woke up one night, <laughs> you know, and you know, or there's I got one high artist, and it came to me. Yeah, there's one artist said uh, it talks to me. I look at it and I'll say, I'll hear the e -e 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 -e. <laughs> and. And, and, and oh, okay, and then he had to go fix it or something. But what what when you're immersed in the creative world, you're 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 walking hand in hand with God, because this the helpers are called. They're with you all the way. They're leading you all the way. You know that that car that almost ran over you, uh, that you weren't looking, and all of a sudden something just stopped you and pulled you back and. That's your helpers. That's your helpers. And, and 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 the reason they're helping you is because they want you to be behold even more. You know? They have more for you to do. They're like, it's not uh, your time more, yet. You have more well, to accomplish. Well, to, to evolve yourself. It's because that's what you're doing. You're 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 collecting knowledge. You're collecting uh, all these good knowledge, these good things. And and that's why uh Stand up is, is is you you're you're with God. In fact, you're talking to God. Okay, God, now what? <laughs> you know, sure. what do you do next? Get you get something going. Well, like I did, you know, with, with the uh, in Boston. You know, I I I, did, I opened up my talk. I I, I said, you know, uh, people always you know ask me, you know, what makes you. Uh, what do you think of God? And I said, well, there is a God, and I know there is a God, and he, and he, and he really likes me. And when people say, <laughs> how do you know that? I say, have you seen my wife? <laughs> 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 and that started it. That, that started the whole, okay, you got to laugh. Now, my, my wife bless her soul she gets a little embarrassed because <laughs> because she she is everything i say you know she is beautiful. <laughs> she's so beautiful that we we have to kind of lie about her age now oh dynamite because, yeah yeah because she she looks too too young to be as old as she is <laughs> and, and, and it doesn't compute with a lot of people those are great but, problems to have yeah. Now, now, right now, I'm, I'm getting to the end, and I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying this more. See, I tell people, you know, you know, they get old and, and uh, they can't do what they used to do. Well, then don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't do what you used to do, then find something you can do that's more useful. To you. Find a new hobby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And, and and you know, judge not that that that's my latest one. That that I, I love that one. I've been I've been went through a few, but uh, you know, agree quickly with your adversary. I love that one, but judge not that I I have to check myself from having an opinion, and sometimes the opinion is not even my own. It's just what I've heard. Mm -hmm. And 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 I I I want to stop that. I said, oh, stop, stop judging, stop judging, because what happens when you when you when you judge, you, you put a like a period on the end of it, and and it's not it's not finished, <laughs> you know, it's not what you sure. think it. Uh, so don't judge, you know. I was I was raised with uh, the the only judge is Jesus. At the end of the day, you can't judge anybody else across from you. Who are you to judge somebody? Like, you're going to make a mistake tomorrow. I'm going to make a mistake. Like, we're all going to do it. So I don't have any room to judge anybody. And, yeah, and don't prejudge. See? That's the misconception of looking at people. Sure, yeah. Yeah, don't prejudge. Mm -hmm. Period. If, if we'd never judged, we'd have no problem. There'd be no racism. Because that's all racism is, is judging people by their clothes, their color, their, their skin color. Where they're from, what they do, their, yeah. Their, their language, 
you know, the, it's all judgmental. No reason to. I don't know no, why it, human beings have to think one one human being has to think they're better than another human being. Well, that's it. And, and, and we, our minds should not even even go there. That's what I'm saying about judging. So if you don't judge, then you're not making assumptions. And you know that thing about assumptions? <laughs> it makes an asset of you and me. You and me. <laughs> sure. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I'm, I'm not professional in this one. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm learning. You know, uh, and and there's a, another thing too. You know, is is if you want a blessing, don't have any bad feelings about anybody else, because if you do, you won't get a blessing until that's cleared up. If you've got a problem with uh, with any with your brother, it's called you know, with with your brother or anybody close. If you got some argument going. You know, that's where see that's where judging not judging not really comes in because there's no, nothing to argue about you know when you think about it and if someone wants to argue then agree with them so okay I, I, you know just for the sake of argument you know you're right and i and say then, okay yeah. i've been going through all the people in my life and i've been apologizing to like and i've been getting so many blessings and I came up with a, a joke about it. I said, did you know that you can clean up more than just your credit karma? You can clean up your real karma. <laughs> <laughs> it works. It's so true. Yeah. And, and what it does, really, you're cleaning the lens. You know, a lot of times, like, like my eyes are failing me now because of age. <clears throat> and, and instead of... Uh, Cursing it, I'm kind of going with it because now my art is becoming kind of Picasso-ish. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 you know, I look at, like I do carvings, I look at the eyes and, oh, that's interesting. But it, 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 it's, it's showing, you know, I'm letting, I'm letting the spirit take me. And so, oh man, I'm, I'm having, I'm having a really nice time right now. And the other thing too is that oh, that's phenomenal. The more more uh, tuned in you are to the universe, the more the universe comes and 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 and, and gives you that that it, it's there, but for some reason it was beyond your touch because it was beyond your your realm of thought. Now, once you once you get that clarity of thought, because that's what I'm talking about, thoughts and prayers. If if you learn to control your thoughts, then you 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 you've done so much to retain balance. Because, that, like I was talking about Tango a minute ago. The, 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 I, I started dancing in tango. I, I was going to do a movie, uh, a Chong movie, where they had a tango uh, piece in there. And so, oh, I got to learn how to dance tango. And so my wife and I, Shelby and I, started uh, taking lessons. Well, she learned real fast. And <laughs> next thing you know, she can dance because the guy has to know the dance. And the girl just has to know to be followed, follow what the guy leads her into. And mm -hmm. I never really took the 10,000 hours it needed in order <laughs> to learn all that shit, you know. To reach professional level. Yeah. So I learned, I learned enough to know that I can concentrate on one aspect of the dance my own entire life and be fine and that's the tango walk like when you walk across the floor yeah. uh just a normal walk you try try doing that and the older you get the harder it is man when you see <laughs> old guys shuffling around <laughs> that, that's what you're blessed that's with why you get older and because 
you lose you lose all this ability you know the reflexes you lo lose your reflexes but uh tango is 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 uh I, i'm working on a whole uh back in the day when when we went to argentina oh 30 40 years ago uh they would have uh milongas which were the tango dances but they had them geared for the youth and and they had like a, a, a running track on the outside of the dance itself where you would do the tango steps but you would do it partnered up and and she would dance backwards half the the the, the trip and you would dance the man would dance backwards for half the trip and it was like it was it was fast and furious and uh, and so much fun and then the other steps they were in the center of the of the dance and so i really want to bring that out I'll, I'll do a movie about it and uh and then create a fad with 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 uh, with people because dance especially tango in the beginning uh, they got the dance from africa and it was the african uh, boat uh guys you know the guys that uh, the africans that were manned the ships that filled the oh, ocean okay, yeah sure yeah they were they would go to ports and and then when tango became like uh uh the answer to the waltz you know it was uh, it was uh, i guess uh, the the this Argentine, Argentine, yeah, they're the ones that kind of put uh, the Argentine folk dance and the African uh, um, uh, tango steps together. Because tango itself, it's a, it's an African word. It means small drum. That's the word tango, and and tango, the dance itself is a is a mating dance for that teenagers did. Uh, they still do in, in certain villages. I think in the Congo. But oh. uh, yeah, we go back. How many different tangos are there? There's a lot of different tangos, isn't there? No, there's two. There's Argentine tango, okay. and then there is what they call Western or uh, uh, tango. And the Western is a stupid one where they, <laughs> they they looked the same way, and you know, walk. You know, their faces go doom doom. Then they gotcha. Uh, okay, all right. Yeah, that that's a that's a white man's dance. <laughs> <laughs> that's some white people stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. that's white, nice white, white people can fuck up anything, man. especially a dance. <laughs> you see what they did to it. Especially a, a dance. Especially, well, you see what they did to the twist. You see, the, oh. the, the twist was a uh, was a ghetto dance, you know, and uh, and then Chubby Checker made it Chubby famous. Checker. And then next thing you know, it's around the world because white people could do the twist. You know, you just do it's real easy. You know, just stand and just stand and, and twist compared to what the, the black dancers. Oh man, that was a whole different number. Well, tango is more intricate. Oh man, the tango. I I, I started teaching uh, when I was going to court. I had to. Uh, uh, do some charity work, you know, and so I, I taught a, a course in, in uh, uh, this university in Orange County. Uh, I forget what it's called, but I, I what I did, I I taught them was a class, you know, kids an extra class for the kids, and I taught them salsa, but I taught them to do a milonga dance. Now the milonga. The way uh, the Argentines, this is how, how they do it. The women, you can you come to the dance together, you know, man, woman, whatever. But the women go and sit off on one area. The men, they kind of mill around the holding cell kind of area. <laughs> the, women, the women sit down and got their purse and put it on their shoes and stuff like that. Well, the men, they're usually dressed and they're standing around smoking a cigarette, trying to look cool drinking a little man just sipping a beer or something but when the dance starts the man walks over to where the women are and he's looking for uh, uh, someone to dance with them 
and uh, and the whole idea, not to make any to so save embarrassment, if the woman doesn't want to dance with the guy for whatever reason, she won't make eye contact with him. She just won't look him in the eye. Just look around, look down. Uh, if she wants to dance with the guy, she'll make eye contact, and he'll ask her with his eyes, "Would you? Do you want to dance?" And she'll nod with her head, and and uh, so he'll hold his hand out. She takes his hand, and they walk out to the center of the, of the dance floor, and then they stand there and wait. And the reason they wait is that. They have to hear the first couple of bars of the tune before the guy can decide what kind of dance or what kind of lead he's going to, uh, what kind of ride he's going to take the, his partner on. It's pretty romantic. Yeah, and then after, after, uh, and both have to be dressed to the nines. You know, they have to be uh, phenomenal. And the women the have, have to wear high heels unless there's some excuse but they have to be on their tiptoes and dancing backwards half the time. And then after the dance, now the, the dance is goes in threes. Now, after the first dance, uh, if uh, they want to dance another one, the guy will ask you, you want to go again? And she'll say yes or no. <clears throat> and if it's no, then he'll lead her back to her seat. And then he'll look for another partner. And if it's yes, then they'll dance another one. The, the, no more than three. Then he'll lead her back to her seat. She sits down. And then sometimes they'll play a, like a salsa or jive tune in between the three tango tunes. And then it starts over again. But it's it's so uh, civilized and so uh, respectful. Respectful of the women, respectful of the men, you know, very, very cool. And back in the days, the, the, you know, when it was the black dancer, because the dance came from Africa. And so the wow. black that the black guys, they were the best dancers. And but they couldn't get any, you know, black girls to dance with them. And so they would go to the brothels, the floor houses. And then they would take a girl from the whorehouse and, and teach her the dance. And and then, you know, then eventually it became a thing. You know, the, the girls in the brothels, they knew how to dance tango. And then the nicer girls, they saw that and they wanted to do the same thing. So they, they learned how to dance. And then there's the, I'll tell you this one thing, uh, you know, that, that, image of a guy with a, a flower a rose in his mouth or the oh, yeah. girl you know that tango that's because the guys would stink so bad <laughs> <laughs> that they literally had to have a, a perfume or a flower holding up to their nose when they dance with them <laughs> that is amazing i did not know that that's amazing isn't that funny well, Linda, it looks like me and you are going to have to learn how to tango now. Yes. Oh, well, maybe man. Tommy and Shelby can come teach us. Well, uh, no, you have to get a real tango teacher. I'll tell you what you should do, though. Go on YouTube and, and Argentine Tango. And then there's a ton of, of uh, professionals and dancers and that. You want to see it done properly. Uh, it blows your mind, but just the Malongo itself, you know, they they got uh, classes on on online, and you can learn. I, I'm still learning. I haven't. Uh, I, I I I got a lot of steps that I practice myself at home, and uh, yeah, because it, it's, a lot of dancing. It's, yeah, it's all about uh, you know, you look good if you know what you're doing. You know what, my, when you were talking about Africa and the black culture, there was not a hint of any white versus black or racism. And I wish that you would just talk for a minute about the mistakes we make when we're referring to other cultures in comedy, because there's so many people that are trying to be funny, trying to be edgy, and it comes across like, hate or racism 
could you talk about that, please? Because yeah, I want yeah, young yeah. people to watch your videos. So inspire people to stay in their own lane or something, Tommy, please. Well, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I got off Twitter because uh, I, I started arguing with uh, with my fans. You know, I got a lot of Trumpies that that love Cheech and Chong, you know, but they're 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 into the Trump cult, you know, and it is a cult, you know. I, I, but I'm sorry, the the Catholic Church in a lot of ways is a cult, you know. <laughs> A lot of these churches, uh, yep. you know, they're, they're cults, you know, Jehovah Witness. They, they got a cult attitude about it. <clears throat> and But sometimes that's what people need, that discipline, you know. Uh, but when, when it comes to uh, evolving again, you know, the... the there's reasons. See, we're... Evo we're what we are, think about this, what humans are, all creatures on this planet, we are gardeners and keepers of the planet that we live in. There was one rule in jail that I, I loved, and it was when you wake up in the morning, you have to clean your own cell, make your own bed, don't even think about walking out without your bed being made and the cell looking neat. <laughs> and, you know, racism has always and will always be uh, in the physical world because that's Think about this. The color of our skin determines really the climate that we're, we were brought up in. 100%. You know, yeah. And, and that's it. That's it. It just, the white guys were brought up where there was a lot of winter. And, and, and the black guys were brought up, the women were brought up where there was a lot of sun, period. Chinese and Japanese, they got real tiny eyes. Why? Again, the sun. They never got the, the, the skin problem. Why? Because they wrapped themselves up. If you look at all the early Japanese gardeners, Chinese, and the, they look like mummies. You know, they're, all <laughs> they're, all, they're all, all wrapped up. And at one Just time, roaming and rapping. At one time, Chinese mm. got a small foot. Was was uh, showed you that you're from the the royal family, you know, and should be treated different. And so, for a few centuries, the the women were crushing their feet, squeezing their feet. Uh, it's like little wooden clogs or something. They're wrapped. They were wrapping their feet. They couldn't walk. It, they crippled themselves just so that they could pretend they were. You know that they were from a royal family, and that uh, there's a, there's a lot of things that we had to learn, and, we, and we, we're learning all these these things, and now we're coming into a new age where we're learning that that are you know that we are there are, we're different, just like trees, uh, there are different barks on the trees. You know, uh, I learned something the other day that. You know the redwood forest in uh, Southern California or Northern California, I guess. Beautiful. Uh, you know they're so tall. And you know why they're so tall? Why is that? They get their moisture from the air. Oh. The fog in the low clouds, uh -huh. that waters that plant. That's why it's tall. See, the roots could never bring that kind of water and, and make the, the thing grow tall. But roots look for water, right? And so yes. water is in the air. Then the, the plants are reaching for the air. See, reaching for the water. That's up there. Reaching for the water. And that's how they grow to be as huge as they are, you see.
Wow. So it's all about distribution and, and, and balance. See, that's what our life is all about. Distribution and balance. Because if uh, with the way our human bodies are, a little virus <laughs> can take us out. <laughs> yeah. a, a tiny little virus can go through the eyes or the skin or the pores or, or just breathe in. It can take us out, you know. Uh, and so we're really at the mercy of God, you know, because that 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 that's the final thing. And but we're here. Well, let's see what what works, you know. Like there's so many seeds. I got a kumquat tree in the back, and every every year it, it gets more fruit. And of course, it feeds the wild animals and the crows and the squirrels and <laughs> the animals. But, but it also, they're seeds. Uh -huh. and every seed is potentially a tree. And it's crazy that. Uh... Oh. oh, there we go. Okay. <clears throat> what time is it? Yeah, we went over the allotted time that. Oh, you always do that, don't you? Do me. <laughs> <laughs> we were strategizing to ask you questions like we would of our parents trying to put us to bed. <laughs> yeah. Hey, oh, that's right. That's right. Dad, tell me. Oh, yeah. That, that's so cool. Tell your good ones. That's so cool. <laughs> no, the bottom line. The bottom line is that. Everybody is doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing at any given time. And and like I, I tell people, you know, that they talk about pot, you know, how, how I said, you know, just be thankful that, that, that they're not throwing us in jail now. Uh, for 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 even looking like you know, or having your car smell like you got pot in it, you know, it's still <laughs> happening in some some parts of the world, you know. We can thank so, pioneers like you though for having this done. Yeah, yeah. No, again, it, it, you know, all the all the glory goes to God, man. I'm just here doing what I'm told to do. That's all. You did great. Right now, right now I got to go get me something to drink. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sounds Tommy. excellent. I'm glad you met Dan Mackey. He's a great guy. I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad I met you too. Tommy, this has been a real you. thrill, man. Thank you so much. Anytime, man. I'm, Thank I'm, you. I'm always, I'm, I'm always open to blather for a while. <laughs> love it. Love it. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Thanks.